floor system installation, center support beam construction and installation. The first step of installing the floor system is to construct the center support beam. The center support beam is installed underneath the floor system and is used to support it. Included in your package are a number of LVLs or LSLs, whichever of these materials your plans call out. These materials are used for the center support beam as well as headers for oversized openings in your home, such as garage doors, double sliding doors, or oversized windows. In this particular case, two or three of the LVLs are nailed together according to your plans using the nailing pattern as per the manufacturer's specifications. Once the center support beam is assembled, lift it and set it into the pre-formed beam pockets in the foundation. Once it's in place, align the supports and lower the beam onto them. If the plans specify a column cap, this is to be installed on the beam and on the upright column at the bearing points. Nail the bracing to the beam from both sides for temporary support before the joists are put permanently into place, making sure that the beam is straight and level. Floor Joist Installation The next step is installing the floor joists. As each joist is set in place, measure in from the edge one and a quarter inches to allow room for the rim board and then nail into place. Refer to your plans for nail size and nailing pattern. As a helpful tip for easier installation, the floor joists can be stacked on the foundation and then raised up in place. Joists are typically placed at 16 inches on center and are nailed through the bottom flange into the sill plate and into the center support beam. Refer to your drawings for spacing details. Once the joists are installed, place the rim board around the perimeter. Nail it according to both the plans and the manufacturer's specifications. Next, cut the 2x6 materials to use for the squash blocking. These will be cut to the depth of the floor joists and placed at 16 inches on center along the gable ends and then nailed into place. For two-story homes, solid blocking must be placed in the floor system above each support post. Note that for basement foundations, an opening must be framed for the stairs according to your plans. When framing the stair opening, it's important to follow the plan closely. Each opening is framed differently, requiring different materials and framing methods. Before framing this area, be sure to verify the rise and run of the stairs. In this case, smaller joists are cut and installed to create the landing. These joists are then attached to a piece of LVL that is perpendicular to the joists. This eliminates the need for additional bearing below the floor system. Refer to your plans for the exact dimensions of the stair opening. Floor Deck Installation The next step is installing the subfloor decking. First apply the subfloor adhesive to the joists and rim board prior to installing the subfloor decking. Then install each 4x8 sheet, nailing them into place as specified in your plans. It's important to cut the first sheet down to four feet on every other row to prevent the seams from lining up. One end of a sheet will have a tongue and the other end will have a groove. This helps the sheets fit together. Be sure the edges are facing the correct direction and that they fit tightly together before nailing. If you have a gap between two sheets, tap the opposite edge of one of the sheets with a mallet or a sledgehammer. Be very careful not to damage the OSB. The final step in completing the floor system is applying the house wrap to the rim board. The 18 inch house wrap is rolled along the rim board and stapled every few inches with a construction grade stapler. Seams should be overlapped a minimum of 12 inches. The floor system is now complete and ready for the wall system.